friends. Today's book is called Milo's Museum. Wouldn't it be fun if you could create your own museum? Well, that's what Milo did. Milo woke up feeling excited. Today, her class was going to the museum. Mommy and Daddy had to work, but Papa went along as a chaperone. When they reached the museum, Milo's teacher told the class that their tour guide was called a docent. A docent is a person who teaches us about what's inside the museum, Miss Lou explained. The docent was a white-haired woman named Anne. She led the children from room to room, stopping to tell them interesting things about certain sculptures and paintings. Once the tour was over, Miss Lou gave the children some time to explore the museum on their own. Milo held her grandfather's hand as they wandered through the rooms together. She stopped in front of a giant mirror and looked at her reflection. Milo could see her classmates admiring the works of art. She liked most of the art too, but something didn't feel right. Milo tugged at her grandfather's hand. What are museums for, Papa? Well, he said, museums hold all the objects that people feel are valuable or important. Things from long ago and from today. Museums are full of stories, really. Does that answer your question? Milo nodded to show Papa she understood, but she still felt funny inside. When they got home, Milo sat on the front porch and watched her world go by. She waved at neighbors as they walked along the sidewalk and nodded her head to the beat when a car drove down the street blasting rap music. Milo hummed along as the ice cream truck circled the block, trailed by laughing kids clutching dollar bills. So many faces, sounds, and stories made up her world. But none of it was in the museum. Milo frowned. Feeling funky, Mama. Milo jumped up and ran to give her Aunt Vashti a hug. They sat down on the porch steps, but Milo didn't say a word until her aunt nudged her and asked, Why so glum, chum? We aren't in the museum, Milo said quietly. I want to know why. Aunt Vashti took a deep breath and held Milo's hand in her own. Every museum has a curator, she told Milo. The curator decides what goes inside the museum. What about us, asked Milo. Don't we get a say? We vote with our feet, said Aunt Vashti. We go see the exhibits that mean the most to us. Those magnificent mummies we saw last year were borrowed from another museum in Cairo. I remember, said Milo, but we shouldn't have to wait for a special exhibit to see ourselves in the museum. You're right, said Aunt Vashti. She put her arm around Milo's shoulder and gave her niece a squeeze. So what are you going to do about it? Me, Milo said with a surprise, what can I do? You could try writing a letter to the curator, Aunt Vashti suggested, or Milo saw the sparkle in her aunt's brown eyes. Or what? You could make your own museum, Aunt Vashti replied. Then she kissed the top of Milo's head and went inside. Milo sat on the porch steps and thought about what Papa had said. Museums hold all the things that people feel are valuable or important. Milo dashed upstairs to her bedroom. She took out her journal and made a list. Then she went downstairs and set the table for dinner. Why are you giggling? Mommy asked. Did you have fun at the museum today? asked Daddy. Milo nodded but didn't say a word. Aunt Vashti winked at her and Milo winked back. 
The next day, Milo took her suitcase out of the closet. She carefully packed her items inside and went out to the backyard. Running away from home, Nana teased from the porch. Wait and see, said Milo. Milo pulled her suitcase across the grass and stopped at her playhouse. What should she do first? Milo thought about her class trip the day before. She took off her book bag and pulled out her journal. With a purple marker, she wrote, Milo's Museum. Milo tore the sheet of paper out of her journal and taped it above the playhouse. When that was done, Milo unzipped her suitcase. Her playhouse didn't have any glass cases or velvet ropes, but Milo set up her exhibit as best she could. When she was ready to give her first tour, Milo asked everyone in her family to come outside. Welcome to my museum, she told them with a proud smile. I'm Milo, your cur curator and docent. You're allowed to touch things in my museum, she said. Just be careful. Nana and Papa were the first to take Milo's tour. These baby booties were knitted by my great grandma Sally, said Milo. She was born down south where it's warm. But it gets cold here in Philly, so she knitted some mittens too. Papa picked up the red leather box. Tell me about this, he said even though he already knew the story. That belonged to my great-great-grandpa Jack, Milo told him. He fought in France during World War I and was so brave they gave him that medal. It's called the Croix de Guerre. Milo wasn't sure she said that right, so she added, that means cross of war. Milo's parents came in next she handed a framed photograph to her mother and said, This is a picture that was taken at last summer's block party. You and Daddy slow danced in the middle of this street. Milo giggled and held out her arm. I still have one of the bracelets we made on Nessa's stoop. Then she turned to her father. This is a statue of Isis that I got at the other museum. She was a goddess in Egypt a long ago time. Aunt Vashti said Isis looks a bit like me. Daddy kissed Milo's cheek and said, Auntie's right. Aunt Vashti came in last. Milo held up a carved Christmas tree ornament. My Uncle Rod sent this from Germany, she explained. Milo pointed to the brown-skinned man wearing a jeweled crown. That's Balthazar, one of the three kings. Aunt Vashti nodded before pointing at something else on the wall. What's that, she asked. This is the jersey I wear when I play softball, Milo told her. My team has never won a trophy, but we still play hard and have fun. Aunt Vashti gave Milo a hug. Your museum is wonderful, she said. By the time Milo finished giving a tour to everyone in her family, several of her neighbors had come into the yard. Two of her classmates were already standing in line, eager to see Milo's exhibit. It's so cool that we have a museum right in our neighborhood, Mallory exclaimed. I want to open my own museum too, said Hector. Why don't you two add something to the collection, Milo suggested. That way, our museum will be a mirror for the whole community. Hector and Mallory agreed. Milo looked at all the friends, family members, and neighbors in her yard. Then she took out her purple marker and made a new sign. The People's Museum. The End. <laughs>